Okay, so in this question, uh, we're given three different equations. And for each equation, um, for in each scenario, we want to find values of A and B that will equal these values. So when, when do we have values, what, what values of A plus what values of B will always give you a negative 1. And here, I think what they're trying to indicate is that the, the values for A should be positive and the values for B should be negative. It's not traditional um, label with exponents, but, but this still works. So what, when we pick positive values of A and we pick negative values for B, when will the sum, when we add them up, when will those sums always be negative 1? Well, let's come up with 1 that adds negative 1. And then we'll use that as a pattern to understand maybe all the cases. Let's start with 2, I don't know, and then add something to it to get negative 1. So if I'm on a number line and I'm at the number 2, here's 1, here's 0, here's negative 1. If I start here, what do I have to add to get to here? Right? What do I have to add to go down 1, 2, 3? We'll have to add negative 3. So if I start at 2 and I add negative 3, I get negative 1. So then play around with this. What if I start at 3? Now, excuse me, if I start at 3, how do I get down to negative 1? Well, I have to add negative 4. If I start at 4, I have to add negative 5. So notice that I'm basically always adding a negative value that is one further from zero than two, than, than the number before. I'm sorry. So if you start at two, you add negative three. If you start at three, you add negative four. If you start at four, you add negative five. So let's write those out. Two plus negative three. Three plus negative four. Four plus negative five. These numbers, all right, these negative numbers are each one greater, one further from zero than their positive counterparts. So 4, for example, 1, 2, 3, 4, is up here. It's 4 away, 1, 2, 3, 4 from 0, but negative 5, right? Negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, 4, 5. It's 5 away from 0. Add up these two, and you get negative 1. You can think of this 5 as, right, almost taking over the 4. And part of why this makes sense to me is that if you have 5 negative values, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 4 positive values, right? Whenever the negative value has one more chip, so to speak, right? If these are chips, right? These all cancel out, and there's always going to be one negative value left over. So if you want to add two numbers to get a negative value, just have the negative number uh, have one more chip or be one further from zero than the positive number. We say in that case that uh, this has a higher absolute value than a. So if this, if the negative number has a higher absolute value of one, right, absolute value is distance from zero, well then the total answer will be negative. In this case, when do we have a negative and positive value add up to zero? Well, if a equals b, right, if they're the same exact value, then when you add them up, their negative and positive counterparts will add up to nothing. Those are opposites, right? So if I have $2 and then I add negative 2 to that, the sum meets at 0. That's because 2 and negative 2, right, they themselves are equal, right? The absolute values, I'm sorry, the absolute values are equal. Both are 2 away from 0. Add them up and you get nothing. So the absolute values are equal. Right, you have one negative, one positive, add them up, they'll balance at zero. Call this opposites. In the last case, we want to start with a negative value and subtract a negative value to get negative two. So let's come up with one example. If I have negative five, what do I have to subtract from negative five to get negative two? Well, I'll do a quick sketch of a number line here. Here's negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5. This has to go up three spaces. So I can subtract negative 3, because that's like adding 3. And that will give me negative 2.
but I still have a sense of, of, of all the values when this actually works. What if I start at uh, negative 4? I would subtract, well, this goes up 1, 2. So notice what's happening here is that these, these absolute values are 2 smaller than these absolute values. You can think about why that might make sense, right? Because you have to hop up a distance of 3 for 5 and 4 for 2. Well, what if we had negative 3? Well, then you have to only hop up 1, right? So each time, the distance we're hopping up is always shorter than the distance we have uh, from 0 for the, the starting number. So for negative 3, that's 3 from 0. Well, we have to only hop up 1. So you could say that whatever number you pick for a, the absolute value of, of negative b has to be 2 less, has to be 2 closer to 0, and that will always give you negative 2. So for example, if I start at negative 10, I would subtract negative 8. Right? This number is 8 away from 0. This number is 10 away from 0, so this has an absolute value that's 2 smaller than this one. Alright, hope that helped.